You're good. Hey, what is up YouTube? I decided to make this quick little video about layout when you're framing your basement. This video is gonna be strictly for homeowners, things that might trip you up, 16 on center layout, uh, how to do your corners, your partition walls, drywall backing, etc. Just really the basics of wall framing and what you need to know for your project on your home. One thing that tripped me up is, or tripped most homeowners up, is a 16 on layout. What that means, if this is my wall, just get in the habit of whatever you do, always do that. I work left to right. If I'm going to frame a wall, I always took the left side of the plate. That's where my layout always comes from. Now how I was taught is hook on the end of your wall and you want to be 16 inches to the center of your stud from the edge of your wall. So some guys will just lay out their first stud so that you go three quarter and three quarter past. So here's where my stud's gonna be. Now you can either set a nail and then set, hook your tape on the nail and continue your layout and then just mark 16 ahead or 16 and go to get your layout. Or for me, it's always just been more simple to hook the end of my wall and just always know that those red marks are just gonna be my centers. And you just go three quarter back and then three quarter ahead of your red mark. Now, to speed it up, you could just mark the leading edge and then with the speed square, these Swanson speed squares, it's marked at an inch and a half. And this is really nice for laying out um, trimmers and jack studs for your windows. So all I know is right here, that's an inch and a half mark. Or, you know, this way, you have your leading edge, you strike it across, and then all I need to do is line up that edge, and then this edge will be at an inch and a half, if that makes sense. So for sake of demonstration purposes, let's say here's my rough opening. It's gonna be size two inches over for your doors. Um, this would be my trimmer on each side. You mark, you designate that with the T. You always know you're gonna have a jack stud or a king stud, I should say. Some people would consider a trimmer to be a jack and then a king. But you always have a stud right next to your trimmer. That is for uh, load bearing walls, also to nail your trim to. I like to lay out windows and doors first. So if I'm laying out this wall, I know right now I'm in my opening. So anything in layout, 48, I'm still gonna mark my layout, but I'm gonna mark a C. So I know that's a cripple. So, like I was talking about, anything through the opening will be a cripple. Now, after you mark your top plate, I will come and bring my bottom plate and transfer my marks directly across. It's always a lot faster than to get your tape out and redoing things. Um, one other thing is let's say this is an exterior wall and our other wall is gonna butt directly into it like this. So what you're gonna wanna know is for corners, if this wall's coming in here, you're gonna wanna build an L. This wall's running past, this wall's gonna butt in. So when I know when I'm building this wall, this will get an L or a California corner and this is for drywall backing because if this wall comes in and na you'll nail it together and you can see this lip, it'll give you a lip and that way you can still receive drywall and then you can still tuck your insulation back in the corner of your wall. So just always know, always have that in mind if you are gonna have a partition wall somewhere in here we build three stud corners like this, and then this wall would come in, and that also on each side of this wall gives you drywall backing, and you can nail it off and make that partition wall secure. So another way to do a partition wall is let's say here's my layout, and I'd frame my wall, and then I got a partition wall coming in here. It's called ladder blocking, which this block is too short, but essentially every two to three foot, you would cut your studs at 14 and a, or your 14 and blocking half. at 14 and a half and just come in and nail through the sides and build it up. 
if you didn't want to do your layout and figure out where your wall is and do a three stud like that. It's not rocket science. I mean, the 16 on centers is just to get your drywall, your sheetrock to break on the center um, or whatever material you're using. Um, another thing is, so if you're framing your basement, like your exterior walls, when you're framing this, this will not be load bearing. Um, obviously that doesn't mean to do a bad job, but you do not need a double top plate. Also, you don't need load bearing headers. Um, you can look online or we could show you some of our uh, doors and windows for headers. But um, you only need a single top. Having your windows and doors, it's, it's just easier to do a trimmer and king stud. And then also for trim purposes, it's nice. Also for windows, it's just easier. Otherwise, if your sill comes in and you try to toenail, it can be kind of a hard thing for someone that's not, um, that you, if you don't do it every day. Now that we've covered some of the technical things, um, now I'll kind of walk you around this job site and show you what's going on. Okay, so right here is that California corner I was talking about. You can see you can still get insulation in and you still have drywall backing on each side. Now also, here is our blocking because our floor joists are running uh, parallel with our wall. So we came in and did flat blocking. That's just so your drywall has something to attach to. Also, we come in after the fact and we mark out where we have blocking. We also mark our studs, top and bottom, for when we hang uh, sheetrock. So mark it on your concrete. One other thing is layout. You, what you want to do, it's called stacking your framing. It makes it easier for the other trades. It's kind of the um, accepted practice of how you should do it. So it's in a load bearing situation, you have a load path here. It's just nice for your utilities, electrical, like I said, the other trades. It also just looks nice. It looks like you know what you're doing. So that's where you get your layout. And this would be a scenario where I'd pull my tape see where my first joist lands. Once I mark that out, drive a nail and then pull 16 and go is what they call that, where you go 16 to the, each leading edge is what I'd mark. How I would pull layout here is I would hook on my plate. I have 12 and 5 eighths. So I'd mark 12 and 5 eighths on my plate, drive a nail, set my tape there and then mark 16 and an X to the right or 16 ahead. So that would be different than the centers, but that's if you are stacking your framing. So this window here, you can see we have our sill. Um, usually it's easier for like a homeowner maybe if you would do um, jack studs bearing on your sill. And then um, our top plate is essentially our header. So we don't, we didn't have to contend with that, but sometimes people will call them a split jack, or if you can envision a jack stud carrying a header, and then this notched out with your sill running your full length, and then essentially a, or it would be, a, be a cripple, cripple. essentially, yeah. yeah. So here's an example of a non-load bearing window, how you'd frame it. It'd be similar to a doorway. Um, so right here, we do not have a jack stud this sill plate or this window sill is just toenailed in. For a homeowner, it's probably easier to go with this method. This is a load bearing wall. We did talk to an engineer who said this was fine. We're just carrying uh, the ceiling or the floor above. Uh, there's no point loads along this wall. So here is our jack, there is our king. Now, they call it a, a jack or a trimmer. Whichever terminology you wanna use, um, basically what this does is holds up your header and then you secure your trimmer to your king stud. Um, and then king stud, the top plate, king stud gives you surface to nail your trim to, attach your drywall to, spaces your electrical box. Okay, so thanks for watching. I tried, We tried to cover some of the more basic things for beginners, homeowners, and whatnot. We have a more detailed series that's gonna be coming out where we cover every aspect of this basement finish. Um, hope to appeal more to trades, more detailed info, but also for you homeowners that are looking to do some of this stuff yourself. So thanks for watching and keep hammering.